Check out my big bicycle. That's pretty cool. <laughs> big pedals, not so great for the, the saddle thing. No, though. no, but it did inform a lot of future invention. True. We got the wheel, got the we got wheel. these simple machines, gears, all sorts of cool stuff. That's and it right. really made the world bigger for a lot of people. Yeah, they could much go more places accessible. they couldn't before. Yep. Oh, mine's mm -hmm. so tiny. Uh -huh. Hey, Susanna, when did you learn to ride a bike? I was about nine years old and my best friend taught me. How about you? I just fell down a lot. I don't really remember how old I was. <laughs> Learning to ride a bike is a rite of passage for sure, right? We all remember that first time trying and falling and trying and I, I fell a lot. <laughs> the bicycle created this individual freedom for people. It let people go to the next town or ride their bike down to the grocery store. And it liberated people not only from their location, but from some of their other things too, like women no longer had to wear corsets because they didn't really go with riding a bike around. It expanded the perimeter of your life and added this personal freedom that we just didn't have before the bicycle. At TFI, the top social media post in 2021 was a stationary exercise bicycle. This isn't like a brand new one. <laughs> no, this is a bicycle from the early 1900s. We have a number of bicycles in the Franklin Institute's collections, around 22, and they span across the years. The earliest one, the Drazenay style bike. What is a Drazenay style bike? They don't have a lot of the uh, um, components that a modern bike would have. They don't have pedals. They don't have chain linking the gears. They sometimes don't even have brakes. How do you, I, I mean, I can't say pedal even. How do you move a bike <laughs> without pedals? Great question. You would actually straddle it and run alongside it. Like a, like a Flintstones yeah, bike. Yeah, just pedaling or paddling with your feet more like. Oh, that's pretty wild. <laughs> Bicycles have a super long history. Dating back to 1418, Giovanni Fontana constructed a bicycle that consisted of four wheels with a loop of rope that connected to gears. By the 1860s, they added pedals to create what's called a bone shaker bike. And then by the 1870s, they had that oversized front wheel bike called the penny farthings or ordinaries. And then if a bike stopped abruptly with that giant wheel, you're gonna go head over heels. It's called take a header, makes sense. So we wanted to move to something a little bit safer. And in 1885, John Kim Starley created the Rover safety bicycle, which actually had equal wheels. In 1890, pneumatic tires changed the game. Tires filled with air, you could change them out and replace them. And they also had changeable parts, so you could just go to the store and the vendor would give you parts that would fit your bicycle. We start to see bicycle clubs appearing at this time, as well as traveling and racing bicycles all over the place. They even had racing trading cards, which is super cool and nerdy, I love that. In 1899, Charles Murphy wanted to let you know that you could race a train, go really darn fast on a bicycle. So he did race a train and became known as Mile a Minute Murphy. The bike has come a long way, and now that we have kind of the design worked out, we've started to specialize it into things for specific uses, like a mountain bike versus a street bike, a BMX competition bike, versus something like a battery-powered bike or a beach bike. Bikes of today have come super far. Now they have GPS connected bikes with health monitors and gaming capabilities that rival all sorts of amazing inventions throughout history. And it's still based on just a bicycle. We even have bikes that fold up and generate their own electricity. So Trace, what do you think is more ingenious? Mm, I don't know. I mean, bikes in the past were pretty ingenious coming up with this idea, but I think bikes now not just because they're more specialized and they can do all of these different things, but because we're thinking of different ways to use this old technology to fit into our lives and all these little niches. All right, I hear what you're saying, but can you imagine being kind of trapped in your town and then all of a sudden you're able to get on a bicycle and free yourself? You can go further, go faster, get a job somewhere else. I don't know. I think this is a tough debate because I think both of these things offer a lot of liberation. I think the bike itself is a pretty ingenious concept. So yeah, uh, let's give it to the historical bike. Woohoo! <laughs>